if you're so fixated on trying to um, be like someone else, when are you actually going to step into being who you are? Mm. You can say that again, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you want me to say it again? <laughs> That's so good though. And it's very true. Um, I think we spend a lot of time in that comparison factor of like trying to be somebody else or trying to be something that we're not, we're trying to be something that we don't even know what we are. So it's like, right. it, it's a big trap that I think as humans, we fall into. So let's go. You are incredible. Your body has a purpose. Your life has a purpose. You were designed to live the best life possible. What's going on? It is Tuesday and I've got a brand new episode for you all today. You are tuned in to listen. You're not defeated. And I'm your host, David Hernandez. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for connecting. Thank you for following up with us. This is a brand new week that we can connect. And I'm super excited about today's episode. I got an awesome, awesome guest who's going to be sharing some insight that's going to impact you greatly. But before we jump in, I just want to remind you, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, click the subscribe button and click the little bell so you can get all the notifications of our up and coming episodes. And if you're listening to me on your favorite podcast station, click the follow button so you don't miss an episode. So the last couple of weeks, I talked about the influence on how our body holds on to information. It's like a sponge, I described it, that everything that we've gone, gone through in life, all the experiences, the good, the bad, is really housed in our body and it is stored in our body and our body has memory. And in today's episode, I have a very special guest. She's an amazing friend of mine. She was and still is a mentor of mine in terms of body work and body movement and connecting with my body. I first connected with her when I started my journey, my acting journey in LA, when I did a two year conservatory program and I had the privilege of coaching with her for about a year, a little over a year. And her name is Caitlin. And Caitlin is coming to us from New Jersey. She's out there now. She is connecting. She's connected with a amazing university who she has the privilege of helping other actors and artists connect with their body. And she's an experienced actress. She's an experienced coach. She's an experienced dancer. She comes from a, from a background of dance and acting. And she is an amazing instructor that really helps us connect with our body. And she uses movement through a specific technique that she'll talk about in today's episode that will allow us to start having better awareness with our body. Look, when I first came to her, I had been in fitness for, you know, about 14 years, but I did not have the understanding of how to truly connect with my body in a deeper way. I had the connection in terms of like working out, muscle memory, being able to understand how, how to contract and how to um, just build muscle, but I had never really had the insight or knew that it was possible to connect with your body. And as you connect with your body through movement, you tap in and discover so much that is actually housed in our body. And that could be trauma. That could be experiences from the past. That could be good memories. That could be sad memories. That could be excitement and joy. And I was just blown away with her work. And I'm super excited to be introducing her to you all my audience, my community, because it's going to really allow you, as it's done to me, to be able to have a deeper connection with your body. When you have a deeper connection with your body, you're going to get information, new awareness that is really going to help you identify if there's anything in you that might be stopping you from living the life that you desire. So without further ado, if you're ready, I'm pumped and I'm excited and I'm ready. So let's jump in on today's episode and everyone help me introduce Caitlin. Enjoy the episode. I'll see you in the end. Mic check. Mic sound okay? Camera one good. Camera two good. All right, here we go. 
Caitlin, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you here with us today. And I know the audience is in for a treat. How are you? Hi, David. I'm doing good. Um, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm really excited. I must say, I've been looking forward to this episode because <laughs> I think I've told you this in the past, but I really want the audience to know this because you played a impact in my life in a moment that was like very scary for me on a journey that I was taking, you know, in my acting career and moving out there to LA and not knowing what was going to happen. And then meeting you and going through your work and everything that you teach and everything that you taught and shared with me impacted my life more than I even thought. Um, and I know we're going to get more into this during the episode, but it, it really helped me be a better coach, a better person. Uh, a better man to even identify things about me that I didn't even know what the heck was going on with me right at the time. <laughs> and um, so I'm just really, really excited for this episode. And I'm excited for the audience because they're going to get a glimpse, like a little glimpse of what this world is and what it is that you do as a creative, as an artist, as an actress, as a coach, as so many things that you do and have the privilege of doing it. So just thank you for for the opportunity of being on here with us and sharing what well, you do to you. the audience. That was very sweet. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm genuinely, this is gonna be so fun. I'm excited to chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun. And look, let's just get into it because there's so much of what you do that I think the world needs to know more about. For me, in my experience, I've discovered that through your work and, and just really tapping into our bodies, right, helped me identify much more about myself that I didn't even know. And I think we live in this in a world sometimes that it's so big, but we live without discovering who we truly are or what we're really capable of becoming. Right. right? And with your work, I was able to identify those things. So let's jump in. What exactly is it that you do? People are like, <laughs> what is this body thing? Like, how did this change his life type of thing, right? But what is it that you do exactly? Share with the audience and give us your story. <laughs> um, okay, so hopefully this is somewhat easy to digest and understand. Um, when I was first learning the work, um, at times it felt a little above me. Uh, but then once I kind of put that mindset aside and really sunk my teeth and my body into it, uh, it just absorbed to me um, very quickly. But anyways, so I, back going back, I studied at Mason Grove School of the Arts. Uh, it is a conservatory program outside of Rutgers University in New Jersey. Um, I trained there for four years. Um, my third year, we went off to London where I studied at Shakespeare's Globe and trained with people like Tim Carroll, who's Mark Rylance's coach, Glenn oh. McDonald, who teaches the Alexander technique, which is also a uh, movement technique for actors and what most of the Brits do. Right. Um, and then while I was at Mason Gross, I learned uh, for the first two years, we learned something called the Williamson technique. And the Williamson technique by definition is that the body is a channel for processing the imaginary world, which is acting into behavior, which is sound and motion. So at first kind of chewing into that, you're like, what are you talking about? What does that yeah, even mean? Can you ex <laughs> yeah, repeat yourself again, please. <laughs> Cause look, so, the audience, a lot uh, of them aren't necessarily aware of the acting world, but because I have a passion for it, I want to bring that into it because I think there's so much more insight that people don't realize that really goes on that right. most people deal with and they don't even realize it. Yeah. So basically, in short, the technique is essentially unpacking things that you hold within you. So things that you store like tension, tension is stored behavior. And so you are taken through a variety of exercises that help release the constrictions within your instrument so that you can be more open, receptive, available, vulnerable, active, and ultimately so that you can actually uh, cherish your human heart and take ownership of it. 
uh, because I think that so often we kind of move through the world, like you were saying, where we kind of forget to be on that journey of discovering who we are. We right. rather, we listen to the projections that are being told to us, like, oh, I think you're this, instead of actually taking ownership of who we are. Mm, that's um, so good. <laughs> thanks. Um, and so to me, for me, when I was learning this work, I think it ultimately changed me more so as a human and obviously as an actor, but without it, I don't know what kind of artist I would be because if you are not in your body as an actor, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> um, and, and it's not always an easy conversation to have with your body. Right. I think you should always be in conversation with the intelligence of what's living under your skin. Um, but it's not always an easy conversation to have. It makes you feel uncomfortable and um, that's okay. And I think yeah. if people kind of take that into awareness and understand that uh, you're going to come up even, not even just doing the work that I teach, but even when you're in an, uh, training with a personal trainer or in an exercise class, a group, yoga session, like you're going to come up against resistances often. And I always try to reframe people's mindsets and tell them that if you feel like you're coming up against some form of resistance, why don't you rephrase that for yourself and say that you're actually coming up against a strength? Mm. Because if you try to come up, if you, if you're feeling resistance towards something, but you imagine it to be your strength, and you keep plowing and pushing through, you're gonna come out on the other side, more powerful, more vulnerable, and just with unbridled ownership. That's so good. And, and I think as humans, we have the natural instinct to wanna to run away from resistance because yeah. it's uncomfortable, we don't like it, right? It must be that we're doing something wrong because I'm having this resistance it must not be right. So therefore let's not do it and let's avoid it. Exactly. And I experienced that too with in your, <laughs> I mean, I had the privilege of, and I know you're laughing because you saw everything that I went through in those eight months of your intense uh, teachings. Right. And I remember the first day I went in there, I was like, what is this? Why is this <laughs> even so beneficial? What are we doing? It, it's, it, I felt like a crazy person. Yeah. But the more I, and I, and, and I clearly remember you saying, don't fight the resistance, like embrace the resistance. And when you said that word, it hit me because I teach my fitness students to embrace their own process. When it's uncomfortable, they tend to want to resist, resist. And that's when it becomes even harder. But when you said embrace it, it was like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to fight this resistance. I'm going to look at it, like you said, as a strength. And how can I get the benefits from this experience in the moment? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so what actually goes on in our body? Let's, let's break down this, this concept a little bit further, right? Like people are saying, okay, what are we doing with our body? What are they talking about the body? What actually goes on with your experience? <laughs> of our body. What is this resistance like? What is this thing that you're actually um, speaking about? Talk to our audience about our body a little bit more. So our bodies hold a lot of things. Um, and there are certain areas within your body that hold on to certain emotions more so than others. So like your upper back is a huge area where you store anger. Um, the lower back is something that uh, consists of disappointment, fear, rage. And then the middle section of your back is where vulnerability lives. So you kind of have these two, what the heck is my scrunchie doing? You kind of have these two opposing forces in the, or similar forces in the middle of an opposing one. Um, and so when I take you through exercises, I mean, the, the, your abdominals hold a lot because I think as society, especially now the past however many years we've been living in such a digitized world yeah. where we try to conform to look like other people. But it's like, you right. don't need to 
those people have their own struggles, but you just don't see that because you only see them living in their positive light, which is what we're all striving to do. But at the end of the day, your body is your own. And if you are so concerned about someone else's so that you can try to be like that person, you're, you're getting off track and you're losing sight of yourself. Um, and the importance it is to love oneself. Anyways, I just went on a random tangent, but the body. So beautiful. So the body from a very young age, we store things, right? When we're little, we have no filters. We kind of are molding our brains. We're molding our bodies to move through space a particular way. So when I start to take you through the beginnings of the Williamson technique, I'm kind of releasing you of all of those habits, those stored behaviors that you've carried with you up until this point in time, Mm -hmm. um, which is why it becomes so uncomfortable. But ultimately the goal is for you to feel comfortable in the uncomfortable, um, much like what you were were describing. Um, And so the body, it just stores so much and it's a lot easier to release things than it is to hold on to things. I know a lot of oh, people wow. out there believe the opposite, Yeah. but it's so much easier to just let go and to let things shed and release from you than it is to hold on to dear life for them. Because if you, if you just even close your eyes and imagine yourself holding on to dear life or something, your entire body is, is tensing up. Whereas if you were to just sit and release, there, it almost feels like your heart is melting down into the floor. So the body is, the body is your vessel. Um, it is the thing that moves you through space. A lot of people think it's your mind, which yes, it does. But I think it's so essential and imperative to have um, an open dialogue consistently with your personal instrument. Um, your body, because it's all you have, um, much like your heart, it's what separates you from the people around you. And so if you're so fixated on, if you're so fixated on trying to, um, be like someone else, when are you actually going to step into being who you are? Mm. You can say that again, please. (laughs) Wait, do you want me to say it again? (laughs) That's so good, though. And it's very true. Um, I think we spend a lot of time in that comparison factor of like trying to be somebody else or trying to be something that we're not. We're trying to be something that we don't even know what we are. So it's like it's, it's a big trap that I think as humans, we fall into so easily because of you know society and so many things that go on in the world and so many norms and we feel like we just have to be a certain way because things are said that we have to be this way and our life has to look a certain way because x y and z right so i think i think what you're saying is so crucial um because we do that subconsciously i think that's part of most humans dna of just trying to be like somebody else now with you said two things that hit me one we resist we hold on to things, right? Why is it that as humans, we have that tendency of wanting to hold on to things when you just explain that holding on is a lot harder than actually releasing and being free of that? What what causes that as humans for us to do that? Um, So I think the big factor that is something that's not really spoken of much um, is body trauma. Uh, there's a lot of trauma that exists within you. And Mm -hmm. so often when I take people through my work, uh, there may be moments where you are physically, emotionally, and mentally coming up against that trauma that happened in your life. And that could have been something that happened when you were five years old, but you're coming up face to face with it in this moment. And are you going to try to hold on to it to suppress the emotion so that it feels more dark and deep and strained? Or are you going to actually breathe into it, accept what's happening for you in the moment and just let it ride out on your breath 
and on sound. Um, and body trauma is huge. Uh, and I think it's interesting because so many people are like, your work is so therapeutic. And I always have to remind folks, like, I'm not a therapist. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not a trained therapist, but yes, this, this body of work is incredibly therapeutic, um, especially because half the time I'm playing like cinematic music. <laughs> yeah. So, if, so it can at times feel incredibly overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, but as long as you are connected always to your breath, um, I mean, I even work with actors right now who are like number ones on shows and before they're going to set to film, I just take them through a breathing exercise because they're like, Caitlin, I can't breathe. Like I just, my, I'm, I'm so in my head and I go, it's cause you're not breathing. You're holding on to dear life for the idea of how this scene is going to go or how you, this person is going to take you in or you're going to take them in. If you just stop and give yourself the permission to breathe and to hold on to your body, to touch in, to, to check in with it, um, then you will be okay. <laughs> Things will happen more freely, more loosely, uh, more organically. I'm just remembering <laughs> all of those experiences that I lived with you and it, it was incredible. And I remember as you talk about breath in those moments when you, you're like, all of this stuff is coming up because I think we deal with it more than we actually realize. It's just oh, as totally, humans yeah. to be safe and to protect ourselves. What do we do? Mm -hmm. Suppress it, right? We don't go there. We ignore it. We run from it. And I think as humans, if we keep avoiding those things, they keep having power over us. Exactly. Right. And they keep and coming so, back. Ex yes. We can't run from them. We think that yes. if I don't go there, if we don't talk about them, they're like going to disappear. Mm -hmm. No, that trauma is going to stay there. Yep. And in the world of acting, in the world of the creative field, we have to be able to be free of that. But I even go even further as humans, we need to be also much more free of that so that we can live free of this, of all these burdens and all these weights that are just dragging us down from our full potential, from discovering who we are and who we can become as humans, yeah. to tap into that place that we don't even know exists in us. And so breath. Walk us through that, because when I learned that from you, I incorporated it immediately with all of my students. And I found the benefit of that breath, because first I tried it on myself. I said, this is so empowering. People need to know about this. And I incorporate some of your, your teachings into <laughs> what I incorporate now <laughs> to my students. Um, but breath, why is that so important? What happens? when we don't breathe, what happens when we do breathe? How can normal humans, even though maybe they're not actors, but how can they also benefit from breath? So breath, breath is a crucial thing, um, obviously. And I think it's something, especially during this time of COVID that people have had a really, um, at times not so kind relationship with Right. because of the people that are struggling to breathe um, and having issues within their lungs. But essentially, the reason why breath is so important is because if you have a blocked diaphragm, you have blocked breath. And with blocked breath comes blocked experience. So if I'm not breathing, I'm incapable of taking you in. I'm incapable of feeling anything and ultimately I'm hurting myself. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna jump ship a little bit here, but I love that your um, work is called Body by Purpose because I've been having this epiphany of late about this idea of purpose and maybe breath ties in a little bit too, um, which is that I think that uh, so often I find that, including myself, people throughout life are in this constant pursuit, this constant chase of purpose. 
like they're they're reaching to try to to attain this idea of purpose as opposed to creating it for themselves wow. and so uh sim similar it's actually not really similar at all to breath i don't know why i just brought that up but i thought of it my brain is all over the place but no breath is breath is just essential and i think if everyone could stop wherever they are and just like place one hand on their heart center and one hand on their low belly, close their eyes and take deep inhalations and exhalations of breath. They'll find that they're going to become more rooted. They're gonna come become more centered and they're going to be more engaged um, with the task that may be sitting in front of them, with the person they may be sitting across from having a chat with, um, they're, intimate partner, their friend, their family member. If you can take a moment for yourself, because honestly, everyone should, and we all need it during these times. Um, I just think that your breath is, is holds so much value. Um, and it's not something that we are consciously aware of uh, when we walk down the street. We're not like, am I Am I breathing? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's so true. And, yeah. and, and same thing, like even when you're exercising or you're doing the work, the reason why in my class, when I say like breathe is because again, you're coming up against something that your body's going, nope, I don't want to tap into that. I don't want to go there. Right. So you're yeah. suppressing it with your breath. You're holding on to dear life. You're holding your breath, which therefore will then start to send you down the cycle of hyperventilating because yeah. you're not just allowing the breath to easily fall in and out of you. And so, yeah, breath is just, it's a tricky matter. Um, it's something that I think you need to train, which may sound odd to folks, but it's it's very valuable, obviously. Um, it really is. And it, again, it's, I think often like, when you are coming against up against those resistances that I spoke of, it's because you're not breathing. Good. So good. Yeah. So good. So what's, <laughs> this was not planned. I'm just feeling <laughs> this. Let's look at, let's look at an average person, right? Let's say yeah. they're professional, their business, their anything that they do in life. They're going through a stressful situation. They're going through some challenges. Maybe they're having setbacks. Maybe they're going through financial situations, mm. COVID, isolation, right? They're feeling lonely. They're feeling depressed. They're feeling rejected. All these things are going on in their life. What can they do? Would you mind walking us through at least 30 seconds or maybe a minute of what somebody can do in a given circumstance like that with breath that can help them be able to start releasing some of that stuff to become free? Would you mind doing that with us for the audience? Yeah, totally. Do you want me to like go through an exercise? Me. Yeah, or? let's do like a little okay. exercise. Let, 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 <laughs> let's just get out of it, any, anything planned and let's just see why. Okay. Because look, this work, you, what you've done and what you do as a human, I think is the world needs to know of this because it's impacted my life it's impacting my students life like i said earlier and i'm not saying this like to to to, to puff up smoke or anything it's just literally <laughs> so beneficial to life it is and something that we just don't know of or we don't talk enough about so please let's do this if you don't mind and let's just give give the audience a little experience of what they can also go through um, to be able to free to become free okay <laughs> Um, so in my opinion, uh, movement, no matter what kind of movement you're doing, it's medicine. It could be walking down the street. It could be going for a jog, a run, a skip. It could be doing like 20 jumping jacks in your office. Um, if you get up and move your body, you are going to exercise, hence the word, yeah. something that is living and stuck within you. Um, so with breath, it's the same thing. Um, so I would say that 
if you find your here, I'll just go through the whole thing. <laughs> so if you find your feet, little clip, little bit, yeah, yeah, and I'll do it with you. You said okay. hand on stomach, whatever you it is, like like you're guiding me, and I will do it. Let's just okay, say that. Cool. Um, so sit with your feet, your legs about hip width distance apart. Okay. And then go ahead and place your the back of your hands on your thighs so that your palms are open and facing up towards the ceiling. Okay. And then soften your chest. And okay. then close your eyes. <laughs> Audience, do it with us. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Now go ahead and inhale for a count of four. One, two, three, four. Hold it there. And then exhale, two, three, four. Once more, inhale, two, three, four. Hold it. And then exhale, two, three, four. Now this time when you inhale, inhale for four, two, three, four, hold it. And then when you exhale, I want you to make sound, any sighs or sounds that fall out of you. Uh. And as you continue to breathe through this cycle, through these counts, go ahead and place one of your hands on the part of your body that you feel the most tense right now in this moment. It could be your heart center, it could be your shoulders, your arms, legs, lower abdomen, hips. And on every inhale and every exhale, I want you to imagine that you're sending your breath to that area of your body. Ridding yourself of any clutter. Any resistance. any obstacle that you may be coming up against within this area of your instrument. And imagining on every inhale, you're inhaling courage and every exhale, you're releasing judgment. Imagining that judgment is being expelled out into your hand, past your hand, and into the ethers far, far away from you. And then go ahead and place your hand back on your thigh with the palm open and facing up towards the ceiling. Noticing any differences you feel within that area of your body or your body as a whole. Taking inventory of what's happening to you, what's happening to the body, what's happening to your breath. And then to seal it, go ahead and place one hand on your heart center and one hand on your low belly. Inhaling courage, exhaling judgment. Um. And then slowly allowing your eyes to drift open. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. <laughs> Brings back so many memories. <laughs> Good.
Thank you so much for that. I mean, I know the audience is definitely uh, going to benefit from that. Thank you. I know this is what you do. Of this course. is your profession. <laughs> this is what you teach. And I, 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 I can't talk about it enough of the importance of our body mm. and being able to just, you said, you said something at the beginning to, um, you use the word um, about our instrument that I, I, I can't I can't recall. But anyways, you were just talking about being able to discover through our body what that is inside of us and to be able to then tap into it because a lot of times we don't even know what the heck lives in our body, right? Yeah. And so um, with what you do, what is the things that that are most common that you find in people that just stops them from being able to get to that place to just release? Um, oh, this is easy. Uh, it's the third eye. This idea that there's constantly this third eye that's watching you, mm. um, almost like your reflection, looking back at you constantly and having some form of judgment uh, about you uh, and I see that so often in my students and actors and people in general. Um, and it's hard. It's a hard thing to just kind of attempt to push away. Uh, but I think the more you trust and the more you give over and give up, uh, these preconceptions and these expectations, because, expectations don't lead anywhere. Um, the only thing they will ever lead to most of the time, if not all the time is just disappointment. Wow. Um, and so, so often people, when they're doing the work, they're just very self aware and self involved instead of being completely open and fearless, uh, which is a hard task to be, but yeah. We, we have this constant critic on us that's like, oh, you're not doing it right. You're not, your arm is not right. Yeah. You aren't sitting correctly. Like, what is the purpose of this? What am I gonna eat for lunch? Like all these things start coming up for us because your head um, gets in the way of things so often. And it's this negative little Nancy that likes to pick at every little thing. And I often tell people that if you're doing something wrong, I'm going to correct it. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to, you don't need to be the teacher. Um, yeah. And I also think that so many of us have been programmed a particular way because of say our upbringing or the way in which a teacher who I always refer to them as gurus um, yeah. taught us growing up um, mm -hmm. and, and, Oh my God, this kind of, can I share something? Please. <laughs> this leads into this idea, or not idea. Hopefully I can find it in my notes. Um, but I wrote something about this, uh, the word ownership, because I don't think it's something that uh, people really talk about. And I, yeah. Oh, okay. Here we go. Are you sure you don't mind me sharing this? No, not at all. Okay. Go ahead. I think I think I think people will will resonate and then is going off of what I'm talking about. OK, Beautiful. anyway, That's so it. throughout life, we're constantly told that it's about the choices we make, the steps we take to meet that choice and the delivery we give in order to take ownership of it. But what we don't talk enough about is ownership. Too often we see roadblocks and rejection as a negative. But what would happen if we rewired that mentality into believing that we have the permission to take ownership of that downfall, that failure, that hindrance, that obstacle? What if we told ourselves that we have the abundance to take on these no's as yeses, these resistances as strengths? What if maybe we held value for who we are and not who we think we're meant to be, to be true believers in us? Because without this value system, who are we really? Are we the abuse we experienced as a child? No, 
That moment in time merely had an effect on us, but it is not who we are. Are we the failed dreams of our parents desperately trying to seek their approval so that they feel less ashamed? No, also not us. Are we what the people in our lives tell us we should be or better yet perceive us to be? Absolutely not. That's someone's take on us or opinion of us, but again, not who we are. We are the storytellers of our own lives and we move it in the directions we see fit because we are the ones captaining the ship, the grandiose affair that is our own personal novel. The experiences we have throughout our journeys of this maze may impact us deeply. The folks we come to meet along the way may help us help to shape us. The food we consume may make us have a list of likes and dislikes. The places we visit may open our eyes to dreams and possibilities, but these are the things we keep in the side pockets of our pea coats. This is not us. This is not ownership. <laughs> that is so freaking powerful. Thank you. Wow. That happened, everybody listening, that happened while I was running. I was running and all of a sudden everything was just kind of flowing out of my brain. Oh, my um, I wish I had like a, a I could have voice memoed or recorded it, but that's what I jotted down from my memory. But again, the reason why I was allowed to have those thoughts and those epiphanies and um, feelings is because I was moving my body. I wasn't sitting, I wasn't stuck. Um, anytime I feel like I need to, like something is coming up for me, I get up and I move. So if there's something that I can do to help folks out there, it's to just encourage them to get up and move. Again, it could be literally walking. Yeah. Walking's dope. It could be doing jumping jacks also cool. It could be jumping rope. It could be skipping or just turning on your favorite song and having a party in your bedroom. Like as long as you get up and move your body, you're going to shed things and it's going to thank you for it. <laughs> and you're taking ownership of it. <laughs> so good. That's so good. That's, <laughs> that's so insightful because I think we have this persona of having to be right with everything that we do. And it's oh, yeah. gotta be a certain way. And like, no, I can't, I can't deal with this because it just affects who I am or it affects my personality or what others might think of ourselves. But when you said just move and it does ourselves good, right? Our body will thank us for it. It's so true. Yeah. And so it's absolutely so true. So now what, what does a person do when let's say they're moving? And I had this experience this morning, actually. I went out and I just walked, right? I just walked and there were a couple things that I was dealing with internally about myself, right? Is what am I, is what I'm doing good enough? Like, am I doing a good job as a coach, right? There's always these little things that I battle with. Um, because we always want to kind of excel and we want to be a certain level and want to be our best, right? So there's in, in me, there's always those fights. And when I went out and I just walked and I came home and I was able to just release everything that I had been holding on to, it was like weight that was taken off of me because of what we've worked through together. What does a person do when they're moving and they're starting to experience these things and going through these things that they've never felt before, or maybe that they're trying to resist and control? What does a person do with that moment? How do they take control of that or not take control of it? Does it simply give into it, right? To be able to get through that experience. Um, I think that trust, you have to trust that whatever's gonna come out on the other side of this um, thing that may be coming up for you is okay. It's all right. Um, nothing bad is going to happen to you. Um, to connect to your breath and to also remember that you are in collaboration with what's going on with you always. You're never in competition with it. Um, much like the people we come in contact with in our everyday life, uh, especially in the, the art field. Like if you're in constant competition with the people around you, you're never gonna be a collaborator. Okay. Um, 
And the same thing can be said about your own self. Like if I'm in constant collaboration with my body, we're on this journey together. But if I'm going to keep competing with it, Mm. it's again, you're coming up against like oppositions, opposite sides of a magnet, resistance. Um, And it's this whole idea of rewiring because again, from a very young age, we've been taught things a certain way, to think a certain way, um, to have certain perceptions of things, this idea of being a perfectionist, Yes. But like what, did, who cares about being perfect? It's boring. It, yeah. just be, it's, it's so much, it's so much more invigorating to get messy, um, to be messy with things, you know, um, stop, get off of social media. <laughs> um, uh, no, seriously, it's such, it's so detrimental to people's mental health. Um, and totally goes against everything that we've been having a dialogue about uh, for the past 45 minutes. Um, (laughs) And yeah, no, I think that you just have to be in constant conversation with the intelligence of your body, which I think is what I said earlier. That's exactly what I said. Because it knows a lot more than you think. And you just have to let that happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, communication Such wisdom. <laughs> That's what it is too. Um, this work, not just the work that I teach helps you also be a better communicator. Um, and it's, it's interesting because you keep bringing up like for the people out there that aren't actors, my goal in life at some point in time is to bestow this work on people that are not in uh, pursuit of the acting uh, or artistic world. Um, Because I think, again, like you've said, this is a kind of technique that is, while it's incredibly crucial to the actor and the artist, I think it's just crucial to the human condition and the human being in general. So anybody out there who is not an actor, um, this work is, is pretty life-changing. It really is. And I speak of experience with it, absolutely changed and transformed my life. And I don't think I would be where I'm at today without this work. And, uh, thank you. (laughs) it's something that I know you absolutely are passionate about and pride yourself so much with because how it's also changed your life, right? Um, yeah, I think that could be a story for another episode, but <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for this. And before we go, thank you. What are three things really quick that you could just share to the audience that they can start doing today to start tapping into the intelligence of their body or start getting better connected with their body here? Um, I would say that a couple of things, um, if you're out on a walk, whatever you're doing, take the attention off of yourself. Even if you're listening to music in your ears, put your attention on the things that you're passing by, whether it's nature, whether it's other people, socially distanced, of course. Um, But really take things in, give yourself that permission to experience the life that's around you because Yes, you are an important person, but what is happening around you is more important um, than you. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's crucial for you to always be in uh, dialogue, in communication, in transit of getting the attention, that third eye off of yourself. Um, because it's so critical and negative and um, overbearing at times. That's one thing. Another thing I would say is give yourself moments of meditation, whatever that means for you. If it's what we went through today, the little breath exercise, um, first checking in with your breath, then um, counting on counts of four or five, and then placing one of your hands on a place in your body that feels tense 
Now you don't have to do this sitting down. You can do it lying down on the ground with your, again, legs, hip width distance apart. Um, I think it's called Shavasana in yoga. Um, okay. But you're kind of like, it's, it's as if you're going to start making a snow angel, oh, angel. but yeah. you're kind of, um, <laughs> your, le your legs are wide, you're laying on your back, your arms are stretched out beside you and your palms are facing up towards the ceiling and you close your eyes. Um, doing that as like a meditation exercise. And then I would say the third thing is turn on a song that you love and just go wild with it. Like just <laughs> have the most fun. Um, dance to your own little beat. Uh, move the way that your heart wants to. Um, shake it out. But I do that every day. People prop, if they <laughs> saw me, I think people probably can see from my New York window. They probably think I'm psychotic, but I'm not. Um, yeah. I'm just shedding some things, y'all. Uh, yeah. But no, I think, I genuinely think that that's not something we uh, allow ourselves to do because we mm -hmm. think like, oh, I'm a 28 year old. Oh, I'm a 38 year old. I'm a 42 year old. I'm too old for this. Like, no, you're not. Right. Let your inner child shine um, yeah. and, and just give yourself a little treat, a little movement treat because movement is medicine. <laughs> Thank you for that. I remember those were actually the funnest moments and we would forget about and just music and just go wild in the in your class yeah. and all that stuff. So great, so great. So three things, just recap. We want to put that music in and and dance. Even if you, yeah. Meditation. Meditation. And then if you're out on a walk, make sure you're taking in the thing or even sitting at a park bench, wherever you are, just taking the attention off of yourself and placing it on the things that are around you. Amazing. Caitlin, I am so blessed. Such an honor to Thank know you, you um, to have the privilege to have been um, in your class and just be coached by you. Thank you for everything that you do. I, on behalf of all the other actors, thank you for your work. Thank you for your passion, your dedication, and thank you for your love for what you do because it, we need more of that. How can well, people you. reach out to you? How can they get in touch with you? People want to know about what you do, about your programs, people that want to do your work, please share. Um, so I have a website. It's called www.caitlinrigney.com. <laughs> um, but I also, my, um, I have an Instagram and the handle of that is at <laughs> Katie Riggs, C-A-I-T-Y-R-I-G-G-S. All of those yeah. will We'll put them in the show notes so people can reach out to you. Awesome. Audience, reach out to her. She's incredible. She's a, a beautiful soul, beautiful person, an amazing coach. And you deserve to take care of your body and to find out the intelligence of it. So, Caitlin, thank you so much again. You're amazing. Thank you. I love this you. This has been Keep so crushing fun. It. You too. And, <laughs> and maybe we'll bring you back for another life story on how this impacted your life. So, thanks again. Yeah. And, uh, have an awesome day. We'll talk soon. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> wow. Wasn't this an awesome, awesome and powerful episode? Look, I was, I recorded this back in about, I think it was during the year, um, it was either 2020 or 2021 when I was really um, putting together the idea of starting a podcast, I started reaching out to people that I just really loved their work and, and, and what they did and how they even impacted my life. And so um, I'm just really excited that I finally, everything lined up in the teachings and the things that I've been talking about, everything lined up for me to be able to release this episode. I think it was released in a timely manner. I think it's relevant and very specific to what I've been talking about in the previous episodes. So I hope you really gain something from this. And look, I really, really um, just invite you to explore everything that we talked about today and to take the exercise that we went through, right? And throughout the day, in the morning, right? As I've, as I've, as I've um, shared 
uh, the importance of creating a morning routine, incorporate that in your morning routine throughout the day. Take a moment. It really just takes a few minutes. And the more we do this, it really helps us to connect with our body in a greater way. So I really, really, really hope you got a lot of uh, valuable information out of this. Let me know what you thought. Drop in the comment section there what you thought. And um, know that this information is here for you. It is intended to bring value and insight. And if you would like to connect with Caitlin, I have all of her information there down in the show notes. Go ahead, send her a message, reach out, set up an appointment to talk to her on how she can further help you. It doesn't matter what it is you do and, 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 and what level you're at in terms of your, your journey of health or your profession. Reach out to her because she can really help you like she's helping me and has helped me um, just develop a deeper understanding and awareness and connection with our body, right? So again, if you want to reach out to her, drop her a message, reach out to her on social, reach out to her through email and just know that she has an amazing heart and she wants to help. And so... Uh, don't be afraid to reach out for that. So thank you again. Thank you so much for tuning in. You are listening to Listen, You're Not Defeated. I'm your host, David Hernandez. And I just want to invite you, if you'd like to connect with me and we haven't already connected, let's connect on social. Uh, there's my handle there at the bottom, at Dave K. Hernandez. It's the same one across all social media platforms. Connect with me. Let's get to know each other. And if you want to have a deeper conversation with me, maybe you're going through some struggles in your health and fitness journey. Maybe you want to learn how to put an end to emotional eating or, or stress eating or binge eating. Or maybe you just want to adopt better habits to help you live the life that you desire. I'd love to connect and have a conversation conversation with you, go to my website, www.davidhernandez.co, davidhernandez.co, it's there at the bottom, reach out, there you can book a conversation with me, book a call, uh, you, you have access to my calendar, you can book a, a schedule a call so we can have that conversation. Also, if you have any questions, any insight that you might want, any questions or struggle, things that you're struggling with, shoot me an email, listen, not defeated at gmail.com. Listen, not defeated at gmail.com. They're at the bottom and I will reach out and answer those. And again, I want to say thank you. Thank you for, for, for connecting with me. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, click the subscribe button so you um, can connect. Click the little bell so you don't miss any episodes. That way you can get all the notifications of our up and coming episodes. And if you're listening to me on your favorite podcast station, look, click the follow button so you don't miss an episode. And if you wouldn't mind, also click the five star rating if you're liking the information that I am sharing. Look, the purpose of every episode is really to bring value and I hope I'm doing that. So let me know as well if you are receiving value. Again, amazing episode. You are tuned in to listen. You're not defeated. And I'm your host, David Hernandez. Go out, crush it, live your best life. And remember, you are incredible and you're not defeated. I love you, everyone. Have a great day and I will see you on the next episode. Peace.